Terrific quarter, terrific growth. Obviously, you've been a big uh, benefactor of this switch to telehealth over the last year, the acceleration of it. But one of the things that I think investors are trying to sort out is your guidance. On the one hand, you say that you have a great opportunity now with the integration of Livongo to do more cross-selling to employers. They want to complete package with management of chronic conditions. You ended the year with 51.8 million paid members, but you're only forecasting 52 to 54 million for 2021. That seems like really small growth given the opportunity. Well, I, I think you hit it on the head when you said employers and consumers are looking for a complete solution. We talk about whole person health care and that's really uh, what our vision has been since the beginning. It's to be able to take care of the whole person, whether they're in the ICU or at home, whether they're chronically ill or dealing with an episodic illness, whether it's mental or physical health that they're looking for. And the combination of our assets and capabilities uniquely positions us to do that. I think when you look at our growth, we doubled revenue last year and we're forecasting that we'll double revenue again this year. I think that underscores the strength of how much that vision resonates in the marketplace. And yet you're only forecasting growth of up to maybe 7% in terms of paid membership. Are you just setting the bar low? <laughs> well, you know, if you look back at last year, we, uh, we doubled uh, our guidance in terms of our actual membership ads. We added 15 million members. Uh, which was uh, more than double our initial guidance. Uh, when you look at our pipeline today, it's actually 50% larger than it was at this time last year. They're just earlier in the deal stage. And so we take a very deliberate uh, and I would say conservative view of how we forecast. And that served us well. I mean, we've, uh, we've met or exceeded our revenue expectations 22 out of our 23 quarters as a public company. And so we're going to stick with that forecasting methodology. And, uh, and I think we have a ton of upside uh, as we look into the back half of this year and very much into 22. What's interesting this year is that you're seeing a lot of uh, the visits are not just for infection, not just about COVID. And obviously, we've had a very, a very slow flu season because so many of us can sort of work from home and, and shelter in place. But uh, I wonder about that momentum. You know, last year, you saw a lot of new people come in because they had to. They had no other choice in many respects, to be able to see a doctor. Uh, notice that your number of fee-only visits actually dropped sequentially from the third quarter to the fourth quarter. Do you expect to see a little bit of a, a pullback as things open up more, people maybe being less reliant on telehealth? So our paid visits actually increased in the fourth quarter, uh, and we expect that to continue for the foresee foreseeable future. Um, you're right. We've seen significant growth, just incredible growth in our visit volume, and we continue to project that next year. We're still projecting 12 to 13 million visits next year. Uh, and, and that's during, as you say, a situation where the cold and flu season really has been non-existent. You know, social distancing works for the, the upper respiratory conditions as well as for COVID. Uh, and we've taken that into account in, uh, in our view uh, of what our visits are going to look like. We've seen mental health visits increase by over 500% last year. Uh, we see that continuing as, as that's really an unmet need that virtual care uh, really fills a tremendous gap in the overall delivery system and improves access to care. And we see people turning to us for, again, that whole person. Because, you know, if someone has depression or anxiety and, and they're untreated, that can be just an incredible exacerbation for things like diabetes or hypertension because of things like binge eating or sleeplessness or lack of motivation to exercise. Mm. So we want to take care of the whole person. And we think all of that will deliver more value for the consumer because we've really gone through the sort of awareness and, and acceptance phases into where it's now an expectation of the consumer that they're going to be able to get all of their needs met virtually. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.